You know, I don't know why preachers think it's really a good thing to say I'm a sinner saved by grace when I prefer to say I'm a former sinner saved by grace. Yeah, I used to be a sinner. Because if, if I'm still going to sin, the blood of Jesus has no effect on me because I've not received of the fullness of it. See, that is one thing to talk a good game. It's another thing to live a holy life. And for some reason, people think because you, you know, you, you got a gift or you're smart or you're nice, you feed the dogs and cats in the neighborhood and you pay your bills on time and you don't run red lights, you automatically a shoe in for heaven. Because you were baptized when you were seven at the Baptist church or the whatever church and you took the right hand of fellowship and your grandma prayed while listening to Bill Withers and all this stuff, and, and you got the biggest tree or the littlest tree, and yeah. you were the poorest in the neighborhood, so blessed are the poor in spirit. That don't apply if you're still out there doing all manner of evil. A lot of poor folk going to heaven. A lot of poor folk going to hell. A lot of rich folk going to heaven. A lot of rich folk going to hell. I want to talk to you briefly today as the Holy Ghost will give me opportunity. God bless you. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this day and for your mercies. Use me, O oh Lord, according to your good pleasure. Let the meditations of my heart and the words that proceed out of my mouth be acceptable to you. Let the Holy Ghost have preeminence over my thoughts, over my mouth, over my heart that you, Lord, will be glorified. Anoint every ear that they might hear what the Spirit would say unto them, and every heart that they might receive the same. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. Before I proceed, I want to recognize our soldiers that are here on vacation. Will you stand? Amen. 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 God bless you. Welcome home. I know your babies are glad to see you. Even the newest among us, Veda, she, she, she needs to quit missing church. She's going to make me preach to her. <laughs> Amen. I have a question for you, for the body of Christ. And, and if you're not saved, it's, it's good for you to ponder the question as well. And that question is simple. What will you be found doing? What will you be found doing? And of course, it seems like that's not a complete question because there's a, a thought that comes along with that. And the thought is, what will you be found doing when our Lord Jesus returns? What will you be found doing when our Lord Jesus returns? Will you be trying to make friends with the world? Will you have broken off all ties and walked in the newness of life? Will you have allowed the Holy Ghost to redirect your ungodly thoughts and put them in the holy and righteous thoughts of God? Will your conduct and your attitude and your character speak highly of he who is above all things? Will you be found serving our King? Will you be found, gentlemen, you could be seated. Will you be found asking somebody to sell you a little bit of oil, or will your lamp be full? Will you be in Alamo Heights, where they have the real good live trees, spending $200 on a tree that's going to die to please your eye gate, to be along with the world who is filled with idolatry? You know, a Christian need only look to his right or his left, and if he's doing things that please the world, then he need to realize that God tells you not to love the world. Neither the things that are in the world. For if you are the love of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Except on Christmas and Easter. You know, because, and Valentine's Day, we'll throw that in for good measure, because it's about love. But actually, it's about lust. All these seminarian educated people that, that really, they just skate by this because it's about a career move. It's about a job. It's about a title. I actually spoke to a man a couple of years ago, and, 
And I said, how can you continue to go to that place? And he said, Doc, I, I got to be called doctor. I said, but they're wrong. They, they're, giving you, they're teaching you bad doctrine. He said, but I got to get that title, man. So your title in hell is more important to you than being a nobody in glory. But we don't believe that because we're Americans. We, we have the English language, the red, white, white, and blue, and we have glory as the nickname of our flag. Huh? We got the NBA, NHL, all the other leagues. We got Apple phone, Peach phone, galaxies. We've conquered galaxy phones. We got satellites and all this stuff. We got Elon Musk. The richest African American is Elon Musk. And, you know, black folks that don't know much, they'll tend to raise their eyebrows and say, well, he's white. Yeah, he's an African, though. He's from South Africa. And he's an American. So he's the richest African American. Amen? Amen. So that question should resonate in your afterthought section of your mind. So let's, let's explore that biblically, and we're going to explore it in terms of biblical understanding in a practical way. So will you turn with me this morning to the Gospel of Luke chapter 12? And when you have found that, please stand in reverence to the Word of God. I hope you don't mind if I take my time today. I'm not as young as I once was, but I like to believe I'm a little wiser than I ever was. Amen. Uh, uh, chapter 12, Verse 40. Say amen when you've gotten to that place. Amen. It says, be ye therefore ready also. Look at your neighbor and say, are you, are you ready? For the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or even to all? And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward whom the Lord, his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give him their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. You may be seated. There is an abundance of reasons why we should be aware of not only what goes on in our homes and on our jobs, but what's going on in the world outside of our immediate circle of existence. What goes on in the church is one thing, what goes on outside the church, what goes on in your city, but what's going on in the world? What did the Lord make you a steward over? Everybody has been given a mission and they're stewards over this one thing. Everybody that has received of the Holy Ghost has been given the same charge to be witnesses. He's given everybody that claims Christ Jesus the charge that after you receive power, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, that you are to be witnesses, not only in what you say, because it's a bunch of good right reverends that talk a good game. Okay. Yeah, they talk a good game and, and, and look for their cigars at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. They try to explain Christmas yeah. and that the idolatry involved in Christmas really isn't idolatry because you're too stupid because... You've not met the criterion to be a sound witnesses, i.e. you're not reading your Bible yourself. And when you do read it, you're not humbling yourself. Now, if I'm not talking to you, then I'm not talking to you. But if I am talking to you, then you need to take stock instead of putting up your spiritual dukes and try to block all the truth that comes at you. See, because being popular don't move God. You can be as popular as you want to be. You can have all kinds of accomplishments, a whole list of them. You can be a, 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 a great crusader of some cause. But if you don't have Jesus, you cannot meet the criteria of a godly witness. 
If you are steeped in idolatry, you testify against yourself. He's made you stewards over this church, over, over the word of God, and over the dispensing of this word of God. And Jesus asked a question. I love this, this phrase, and it caught my mind. I don't know if you've ever noticed it, but you don't see it much. But I know in Luke, I saw it about four or five times. And I wondered, why is it only four or five times? I won't go into that, but here's what it says. And the Lord said. And the Lord said, if you look through Luke, you'll find he maybe uses that phrase only five times. But there's a lot of he said and he said and he commented. But now the Lord is saying something that is unequivocally straight from the throne of God with a power that is ready to unlock your understanding as to what the will is of God and what your purpose is in that will. Isn't that a powerful thing? Because now you can make it personal. You know, I spoke of trees earlier. And I don't find that he says, make sure you get an inflatable idol named Chris Kringle. And put it in your front yard. I look at the, the phrase stewardship. That means to be one responsible in taking care of a given task, a given thing, or a given person. You are made steward, responsible. Now, if the Lord says this, and look at what he says. He says, who then is that? Let's look at faithful. Are you faithful when you purposely plead ignorance and re re resign yourself to the idea that the, the, the traditions of men outweigh the commandments of God? When you know in your heart and in your mind and in the word of God that it tells you not to put trees in your house. It tells you not to do it. And they're quick to say, well, that's Old Testament. So, so, so is thou shalt not serve any other God but what? And you'll, you'll flaunt that, well, I, there's only one God, but I got to get my Christmas tree. Because uh, that's his birthday. Well, prove it. I, and you know, it's funny. They love to quote Paul in chapter 7 of Romans, but they never say what Paul said, jingle bell hop, jingle bell rock. Let's celebrate Jesus' birthday. I, I'm more concerned about celebrating his resurrection. Uh, I'm more about being grateful for the fact that he showed me that I no longer have to fear death. So let's look at this scripture. He says, he who then is faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household. He said, look, you are ruler in the kingdom of God. But in order to solidify that position that Christ has given us, that the Lord has given us, we have to exercise the will of God. Are you in his will? There are no elves. Those are actually derived from demons. An elf is a demon. Quit teaching your children. Quit lying to your kids and your grandkids. Santa Claus brought you this. Santa Claus don't have a visa. He ain't even real. They're not going to send the bills to Santa Claus. They're going to send the bills to you. But this is going on in the church. I'm not talking about heathens that don't know any better. I'm not talking about those out there that are given to idolatry. I'm talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees in America. I'm talking about these hypocrites in San Antonio. They'll, they'll gag at a net and swallow a camel. I just can't give you my tithe and offering, but I'm going to spend $300 on this spruce tree and another $800 on these ornaments. And if you break one that grandmama handed down, oh, they just ruined their Christmas. Oh, they just ruined my life because that glass broke. Let me tell you something. Your tree, your house, everything going to burn anyway. What are you going to be found doing when the fire starts? What are you going to be found doing when the fire starts? Do you think you put here to stay here? You're going to have to give an answer for your stewardship, whether or not you were 
a steward that abhorred idolatry like your father which art in heaven, the one y'all pray to. Our father which art in heaven. Bless this Christmas tree and root off the rain, no reindeer. And let's give an applause to the little drummer boy. You devil, you. Cupid was a demon. He's a demon of lust and lasciviousness. But you won't hear that because pastors don't want to empty out their churches. Because they know people don't really want to hear that their traditions are against the will of God. Because once you realize that, you realize you have been found outside of the will of God and your world expands and falls down. But when we give heed to the word of God and we look at what he's saying, we know that great is our reward in our stewardship, in our adherence to obeying and shunning idolatry. It is idol worship. Somebody said, Bishop, why don't you? I was in seminary, I was teaching in seminary, and they had a meeting on me. And the president of the seminary said, Some say I don't believe that Jesus is the Christ. I said, Well, how can I be saved if I don't believe Jesus is the Christ? He lives in me. I serve him. Sure, Jesus is the Christ. He is Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lamb of God, Paschal. He's the bread of life. He is the only begotten of the Father. Yes, that's my Lord. Amen. He said, well, they want to talk to you in the chapel. This was at the seminary school. So it was, I said, oh, okay. And I thought we were going to sit at a table or something and talk. You know how, you know, people do. But they set me in front of the Bursa and in front of the, the dean and the vice president and this professor and, and, and all of this. And they sat there and they had me there. And I said, oh, this is an inquisition. Yes, that means I'm in the will of God. huh? Because people are, if everybody want to be on your train, there's something wrong with you. If everybody want to be at your house, talking about uh, the first Lord, yeah, that, there's something wrong with you. Huh, everybody want to send you fruitcake and gingerbread cookies. Only in December do we see on the news how these heathens want to help folks. Why does it have to be a, 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 an idolatrous celebration to help somebody? Huh? Uh, and so, so I'm sitting in front of these wise men, these doctors and PhDs and masters of theology and I'm sitting in front of them and they said one of them says uh, first let me ask you said uh what church did you grow up in I said I grew up in the largest black Baptist church in San Antonio I grew up at such and such a church under S.H. James and they said uh whoa because they knew who that was they like oh he come from good breeding <laughs> I, he came from Second Baptist Church. That was back when, when there was no tree in Second Baptist Church. And I said, uh, yeah, I used to be a Sunday school teacher when I was 12 years old. I was a substitute Sunday school teacher. I went to Baptist Training Union. I went to two uh, National Baptist Conventions by the time I was 15. One in Philadelphia and one in Louisville, Kentucky. I sang in the youth choir. My aunt was director of music. I said, so uh, I, was, I was always hungry for the word of God. And then he said, well, I was in your, one of your classes that you were teaching, and I heard you say, I don't do Christmas. And I said, yeah, you heard right. He said, can you tell me why you don't do Christmas? As I looked at the bunny rabbits that they had cut out with chocolate eggs along the chapel wall and, and, and looked like Cadbury stuff. Because Easter was approaching. I said, well, the word of God tells me to bring up the kids, children in the way in which they should. I went simple with them. He told us to bring them up in the way in which they should go. He didn't say teach them lies. We, we, had, we had a program in America called Stranger Danger. But now we say lay some cookies and milk out for a stranger coming through your chimney. And he too big to get through there anyway. But magic. Magic. Weren't we told to stay away from magic? I said, so I don't do Christmas because it's contrary to the will of God, and I want to be a good steward. And I don't do Easter either, and I pointed to their walls. 
I said, because I don't celebrate fertility goddesses. Had Easter in the Bible is mentioned one time, had nothing to do with the resurrection. Had something to do with murder. So if you, if, if, if you pardon me, I'm trying to help you understand that this question is, is pertaining to where your heart is. You know, because your treasure is where your heart is. If you can't feel good about doing something for somebody until December, your heart is in the wrong location. Your mind is not found in the will of God. What will you be found doing? Going to the office party, waiting. You're going to be a bank teller with reindeer antlers on your head. You look silly. You're a grown person acting like a third grade child that knows no better. What are you going to be found doing? Uh, and so I'm sitting there and, and one of them says, uh, the president asked me, he says, uh, so pastor, who do you say Jesus is? I said, that's a good question. Jesus is the Lord. He is the only begotten son of God, son of David, son of Mary, Paschal, bread of life. He is, I am. He is Mary's little boy. He is my master. He is the Christ. He is Yeshua HaMashiach, but he is not his father. He said, wait a minute, but didn't Jesus say, when you see me, you see the father? I said, well, you said that Jesus said that. I said, but let me tell you, when you see Terrence Jr., you see his father. Because he came out of me just like Jesus came out of the father of spirits. But see, we get caught up in wanting to do what's popular, what's want, want to do, and we can't even see the walls falling down. We so, we so busy partying that we can't see or hear the burglar coming in the back door. Because we're not good stewards. We're not watching. What will you be found? Will you be asleep at the wheel? Huh? Will you be doing the secret Santa? Santa ain't no secret. He a devil. And if you partake in any kind of celebratory event regarding this holiday, I don't care how big your church is. I don't care if your last name is Jacob Osteen. I don't care if your last name is Jimerson, Amerson, or White. If you partake with that, you are lost. And you are going to receive a woe in that day that the master returns. Because you are promoting idolatries, lies, lust, lasciviousness, greed, and selfishness. And even gluttony. Uh, you ever notice how people say, yeah, you got to work that Christmas off. <laughs> got to work that Thanksgiving off. Why don't you work while it's day for the kingdom of heaven? You got the spirit of gluttony. Well, man, that show was good. I know I don't need to, but can I have some more of that dressing? Well, if you don't need to, what you want it for? Uh, you, why you want to get drunk on the holiday? Well, it's just eggnog. Don't tell me it ain't got Bacardi in it. Uh, you got Crown Royal don't make you holy. Crown Royal, Bacardi, what, what is this? Huh? Well, that's my thorn in the flesh. Well, you need to pull it out. You need to pull your thorn in the flesh out because he's going to, he's asking a very profound and simple question. He says here in, in, in verse 40, 43, he says, Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. He says, look, you're going to have to do what I say. Go to verse 47 for me. He said, in verse 46, he said, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in sunder and will appoint him his portion with unbelievers. He said, you're going to get what they got. You can have all kinds of MDs. You can have all kinds of PhDs. You can have all the eloquence of speech that any man would require. You can read 30,000 books every two years. But if you don't have his spirit, you are none of his. 
If you are not walking, living, obeying, speaking, and doing the business of your father, you are not a wise servant nor a good steward. Neither one. And you will be numbered among the unbelievers. Yes, it is biblical. It is biblical that you are not supposed to serve idols. You cannot bend down and put a present under the tree with your mind. You have to actually bend down and do it. He said you don't bend down or serve it. He said you don't bend down or serve anything. Yeah. Jeremiah said why you taking trees in your house? Right. He said and then you wonder why the heathen rage. Yeah. Black Friday. Why would you want to go shopping on a Black Friday? That's what they mean by BLM, greedy, lazy, mischievous, sorry, given to lesbianism and debauchery and greed. So I'm sitting there, and he says, so wait a minute. So are you saying Jesus is not God? I said, no, I'll say as well. For Jesus said, have I not said that ye are gods? Now, if he said we are gods, all the more is he. Because you are, you are what you came out of. You came out of a man and a woman. So you're human. He came out of a woman and God. So is he human and God? Okay, but he's not his father. So God didn't come down and put on a suit and became his own son. That's heretical. That's damnable. That's wrong. That's why you got Christmas trees and you got people caroling in God's house. That's all it is, is confusion. In God's house, and you got kids growing up robbing because they think they ought to have. You ask a miss. Why do you walk? Because you ask a miss. You're asking for the wrong thing. You're looking for the wrong thing. We ought to look for his blessed return. We ought to look for his coming. We ought to be doing what Jesus said. When he, you remember what Jesus told Mary and Joe when they looked for him? They looked for him for 24, over 24 hours. They didn't know where he was. They, I mean, if they had an arcade, they looked at uh, they were looking for him. Where, oh, man, we got to go all the way back to find this boy. And guess where they found him? He was at the church. And he said, don't you know? Now, can you imagine what, what happened when Joe heard him say that? He said, don't you know I must be about my father's business? Now, Joe was a carpenter. He was, so Joe said, what? But see, he remembered what Gabriel told him. So he wasn't lost on it. Uh, but, but, but I ask you, are you about your father's business or are you trying to please the world? Are you trying to please your kinfolk? Are you trying to please your own lustful desires? Are you trying to get more people in your church so you can say, hey, look at, man, we got 5,000 people. Go, say, add going to hell with that. Because if they're doing what you're doing, they're going to hell. I, I mean, you can say I'm judging and I will agree. Yes, my judgment comes right out of here. Right. What will you be found doing? So uh, when I told him, I said, yeah, you said, right. I said, but my son has my DNA. Jesus has God's DNA. That's why he didn't need blood and glory. But he told the disciples, he said, see, am I not flesh and bone? He didn't say flesh and blood because right. blood cannot enter to the kingdom of heaven. Flesh and blood. OK, so y'all, y'all stay with me here a minute. So, so now, one of my professors who got upset with me one night, he, he taught philosophy of religion, and I listened to him, and I said, so, I asked a question, I said, so are you saying that Jesus and God, that, are you saying that God is a species? Because the way he explained it philosophically said that God was a species. I said, is that what you're saying? He said, no, that's not what, I said, that's what you said, is that what you meant to say? Uh, and he, he came by me one day and he said, uh, now I got to go home and do some homework. But he had his doctor before his name, Dr. So-and-so. He should have did his homework beforehand. See, you need to do your homework before Jesus show up, yeah. before the truth come to you. Yeah. 
You need to be doing your homework because it's too late. What are you going to say? Wait, Lord, don't blow the trumpet. Too late. I, wait, wait. I was going to church, but my bunion was hurting. Lord, I'm sorry. Your bunion was hurting. You know, I worked three hours too much yesterday, Lord, and, and, and I had an allergy, so I wanted to stay at home and watch it online. So one of my, my, my professors stood up and he said, so are you saying all the church fathers were wrong? <clears throat> and I said, if they believe as you do, they were wrong. He got up and he hit the back of the pew. He said, how dare you? I said, it's the truth. What was I supposed to do, shake and say, oh, please? Really? I'm standing on the rock of salvation. I'm about my father's business. My, and so when I, I said, I tell you what, we prayed and got ready to leave. And, and the president of the college came and followed me outside. I said, I tell you what, I won't be coming back. Don't worry about me. He said, he said Pastor, all that that you have, he said, he said, we're ready to give you an honorary doctorate, but can you just agree with us on this and on that? I said, sir, my concern is that you've become so intellectual that you've forgotten the truth. Some people have become so social and so traditional that they've forgotten the truth. So again, I ask you, what will you be found doing? Will you be found doing something that just makes your flesh feel good and make people call your name? Or will you be doing something that causes you to have to war against your flesh and so they can call on Jesus? What will you be doing? It's a powerful thing. The Lord said in verse 46, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour when he is not aware and will cut him asunder, will appoint him in his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, they knew better. They knew better. They knew they were teaching that this Christmas. Oh, oh, silent. Yeah, okay, right. What does that get you? What does that get you? Three wise men. There's nowhere in scripture where it says three wise men. It was wise men that brought three gifts. Uh, they, they, they don't, they, they're devoid of the fear of God and the truth because they want you to pat them on the back. They want their, 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 their phylacteries broadened. They want you to say, good, right, Reverend Doctor, how you doing? They want greetings in the marketplace. They want people to applaud. Why you go to hell? Oh, I got to get, get my wife. She loved this coat. Well, why didn't you buy it to her before when you had the money two months ago? Why she got to wait till December? So you could agree with the devils and the devils could say, that a boy, Deacon. That a boy, sister, so and so. Oh, go ahead, secret Santa. That a boy. Huh? What will you be fine doing? Getting high? Telling a lie? Stealing from somebody and don't know why? What will you be found doing? Will you be praying? Or will you be playing? Oh, Lady Luck, my girl need a new passion. No, she don't. She got more than a meal of Marcos. She, a, she don't need no more shoes. And you paying three or $400 for a, a 12-year-old some tennis shoes. You have lost your mind. There's something wrong with you. Your heathen is skipping school and you buy him $1,200 tennis shoes and an $800 phone just because he can run fast and avoid a tackle. You need to give him Jesus. Take the tree out your house. Did y'all see where they had a Christmas tree in their house and there was a baby owl in there? I've been in there two days. That owl is confused. It's like, why did they break my house and put my house in their house. And then they evict me out of my house and their house. That owl is like, what, really? Really? Even I know humans, what they need my house in their house for? Putting all this stuff on my house. I don't want that junk on my house. Unless you got some rats in that box, don't put it under my house. Yeah, because that's what owls like to eat. Ain't even get an owl, no, no, no. Not the need. Just took him and took him. Poor owl. And they'd be the first one to talk about 
Feed the dogs. Save the trees. What you talking about saving the trees? You talking about greenhouse emissions and you killing the source that gets rid of the greenhouse. Trees is what kills that junk. They breathe in that poison. But you got to every year make sure the poor, poor earth is trying to breathe. Because <laughs> you killing all the <laughs> earth trying to breathe and you killing all the trees. Uh, and then you want to give CPS a whole, they want all kinds of money to do a ballroom. And you go up and down these poor neighborhoods and see more lights than cents. All these lights. But we so caught up. Because we don't know the will of God because we're so used to traditions and doctrines of devils. So he, he says here in verse 47, and that servant which knew his Lord's will, they knew better. They knew it. But they just brushed it off. Well, you know, he don't really mean Christmas, you know, like that. We, when we say Christmas, we talk about, you know, here's the season, reason for the season. So your reason for going to hell this season I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to diss Jesus' truth and become an idolater. I'm going to do idolatry at party because the Lord knows my heart. Yeah, and it's desperately wicked. It's desperately wicked. Who can know it? I'm going to tell you something. You need to get it right. Uh, what will you be found doing? Going to North Star Mall? Huh? You just maxing out your little Visa card. Huh? You just maxing out your Amex. Once a year, you go broke. And then you rely on my money to fill your coffers. It's called your tax refund. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know you ain't sent IRS a check. IRS been sending you a check. You be counting your eggs, too. Ooh, they going to send me this. How many kids I got? <laughs> huh? You wouldn't be so broke if you quit giving all your money to the devil. Yeah. But let the Lord say give your tithes and offerings. Oh. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. <laughs> Tithe, that's 10. You mean God want me to give a 10 cents off of my, well, Joe Biden taking almost 50 cents off your dollar. And you gladly do that. You go to the grocery store and you paying, I, I went to the grocery store recently and I know I bought, what, back when I was growing up, let's say when I was about 12, it would have, what I bought, I probably would have ended up paying seven dollars of my mother money, yeah. probably, yeah. and probably got some change back. That lady said ninety-nine dollars and some change. Y'all see that commercial where the guy said, "Well, I'm paying for my own salad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not paying for everybody else's. I'm just paying for my. Why are you charging me so much?" You, you, you be thinking about fasting, looking at that stuff. Every time I did, you find everything you look. I missed the money out. What aisle do you have the money on? So, so he says, and prepare not himself. You know why folks can't prepare themselves? Because they're too busy worrying about other folks. They're too busy worrying about what society say. They're too busy worrying about what everybody else is doing and not what they need to be doing. Huh. If you focus on yourself being found in the will of God, then God says, ask what you will. See, when you do that, then you'll find that the only reason why some people get sick is because they sick of God. That's it. Sometimes folk get sick because they sick of God. I just, I don't know. And let me show you what I mean by that. They don't want to do his will. You know, I'm holy when I need him. Let somebody I love get sick. Man, I'll pray more in two hours than I've ever paid, prayed in my life. Let somebody, let somebody that I love die. I want God to drop all my tears. I want him to comfort the blow. I want, yeah, but you ain't done nothing for him. What have you done for him? Where will you be? You're not preparing. So how do you do that? You pray, obey. You fast, obey. You give of your bounty and obey. Don't be talking about, well, I'm sick, I give my tithe. He said tithe and offering. Yeah. You give a tithe and an offering. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and please come to me again and say, that's just Old Testament. 
So is that why you celebrate Christmas? Because it was said, don't be a, an idolater in the Old Testament? Yeah, but it said in the New Testament, so does tithing. But because you're ignorant and willfully so, you're willfully ignorant. You desire not to obey. You don't want to do right. That's why women dress like they, they trying to get be on for sale. Some women go to church on Sunday need a for sale sign on their head. Because they dress just, they, either for rent because they dress, look, they look just like them women used to look on Cherry Street when I was a kid. Look just like them hoes. You know, I mean, they used to wear platform, had they, had they get Christy Love wig on. Oh, yeah. And, and, and look, they look short dress, be, legs be looking like they could run, boy. But they walk in the night, have on their rabbit fur, fake fur coat. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. They go to church like that. And pastors won't say nothing. Uh, mothers of the church won't say nothing. So what are you doing? Are you going to be doing God's will when you see somebody on the will of God? For the love of God, correct them. For the love of God, say, look, you can't dress like that and please God. You don't see young men coming in here with no, uh, what they call it, sissy bun on their head? Earrings on the side. What are you, a girl now? You a Kunta Kinte slave? You're a Hebrew slave? What you got an earring in your ear for? That's what they did with slaves. We're free. We have been set at liberty by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I don't care. I, you know, people have come to me and talk about, man, I can play the drums. Yeah, but you got, you got your wife's jewelry in your head. We're trying to set an example. of Let somebody get in the fight with you and hit you real hard on that earring. I guarantee you all your manliness going to weaken up because that's a pain. These things are delicate. You get hit with that and that earring gets stuck in the side of your head, you're going to forget you got a right arm to throw a blow with because you're going to be just like that. Ask any woman that had an earring pull out of her ear. Does it hurt, ladies? It does. Now, can you imagine somebody smacking you upside your head and you got on your girlfriend's earring? That thing going to be stuck in the back of your jaw. And you got that ponytail, he just gonna grab that ponytail. <laughs> put his knee right there in your face. Um, and talk about what Jesus had long. No, he didn't. Why would Paul say something about long hair on a man being ashamed if he knew Christ had long hair? See, that's, that comes from loving the world and not doing the will of God in your life. Neither did According to his will, you ain't even doing it. He said, you're going to be beaten with many stripes. And, and, and it's, it's cool. It's cool. But see, man, see what I'm saying? Man, see, it's like the way I got it, you know. So, so, so I was baptized when I was like nine, ten years old, man. I went to such and such a Ebenezer Baptist Catholic Methodist Pentecostal church over there on the corner of Nowhere Street. And, and see, I was raised by my grandma. Where was your daddy? Oh, I ain't know him. Well, I tell you what, somebody's in line to be your Abba Father. His name is Jesus. He can change the way you talk, the way you walk, the way you live, and even the way you think, and the way you handle your stewardship. You even Some folks don't understand this. The question is simple. What will you be found doing? Will you be witnessing like Jesus told you to do? He said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, your witness is useless. Your testimony amounts to nothing because it's without authority. So when you see all this Christmassy, all this other stuff and these pastors and all these choirs and, and all of this glitz and glitter and, and all this idolatry and devilment, you can let them know, I ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. Quit lying on Jesus. He, the manger wasn't even wooden. Uh, the manger was, if you do your research, you'll find that it was a stone basin about as high as the animal's so they wouldn't have to bend so far in their thirst. they just go up to it and drink it. So he was right there. Huh? Then a little drummer boy didn't come and play like Ringo Starr. Huh? It wasn't none of that. He wasn't a baby when Herod was looking for him. He was two years old. 
He was in a house. When, when, they, when the kings found him, he was in a house. He was a toddler. It took him a long time to get there. Y'all, people want to make it seem like he was born today, and they caught a train, a train or an airplane and got there the next day. <laughs> it took him a while to travel from the Far East to Jerusalem. And guess what? Jesus was what we would call a ghetto baby. Anything good come out of Nazareth, said Nathan. That's what Nathan, one of his disciples, said. I think he was third in line. Nathan said that, what good thing, does any good thing come out of Nazareth? Oh, yeah, a Nazarene named Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to take you somewhere else. Y'all, y'all, y'all go with me to the Old Testament. Uh, go, go with me to 1 Kings chapter 19. You know, and, and he, I think people think that God says, well, I expect holiness from you and sort of holiness from you and whatever you feel like over here. I, you know, I don't expect you to be as holy as Bishop White. I don't expect you to be as holy as them over there. And whatever you feel like, and we'll all get to heaven in a little rowboat, clap, clap. Don't work like that. God is not a respecter of persons. He's not a respecter of countries. That's why... United States of America is falling. It's irretrievable. Now, I know it's a lot of nice people with good soft hearts, sort of wimpy, think, well, I just don't believe God can't save America. Well, he did, but that wasn't good enough for you. He, 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 you, you pull out one Bush, one Obama, and Hillary Clinton, and he trumped it. But that wasn't good enough. Yeah, you pulled out of George Bush, Bill Clinton, when Bill Clinton was one of the biggest devils in the White House, along, he's along the same line as John Kennedy, because John Kennedy was a homemonger too. Huh? One of the biggest thieves ever walked in there other than Richard Nixon was LBJ. Y'all didn't, see, see, when you know, you know, you know. I don't need anybody to say, well, well, you know, how you know it? Because I know. That's why I was teaching in seminary. That's why I know what I know, because I got the Holy Ghost. And it reveals all things unto us. And when George Bush was appointed president, because he wasn't elected, when he was appointed by the Supreme Court to be president, oh, man, everybody was on the side when, when, when they got scurred because everybody was going to church. Y'all remember that dreadful day? Some, some of the people over 25 ought to remember that. When, when they ran into the planes into the, uh, to the uh, uh, what do you call that place in Washington? The military place. Pentagon. Pentagon. The Pentagon and in Pennsylvania and in the towers. Oh, man, folks were crowding churches. Oh, they were ready to do God's will. Man, they were listening to John Lennon's uh, Antichrist song, Imagine. That's a stone Antichrist song. John Lennon, imagine there's no people. Shut up. That's so Antichrist. Listen to the lyrics. Huh? So people going to church, going to church, and guess what? The smart one said, God didn't have nothing to do with this. This was just bad people doing bad things. I wanted to reach through TV and sp- all them lying preachers. God had everything to do. What do you mean? You think the devil's going to bring what the devil intended for evil? God was ready to use for good. But you sorry, weak back, jelly back, lying, hypocritical doctors, good right reverend. Wanted to make the people feel unafraid. You should have told them, good, you're here. Huh? Because God spared you. Yes. And he's trying to get you to hear his word. He is angry at America. Yes. See, but now they did. We God didn't have nothing to do with this. And then we paid them all kinds of money. What we give? You know, some of the people that died in that tower probably got bodies and scattered skeletons in their backyard. You paying them money for dying. Don't they? If they're in the tower, didn't they have insurance? Hello, I know that sounds so unpopular among church folks. Black Lives Matter. Okay. Y'all there? Yo, chapter 19, verse 9. And it reads, And he came thither unto a cave, talking about Elijah. Now he just got through eating and being refreshed. You know how God will refresh you when you've been through a wilderness, you've been tried, and you decide to give your life to him. And he says, Okay, I tell you what, I'm going to take you, you're going to take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. He said, so he gave him some, some food and stuff. And so he, he went to her, the mounts of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, 
the word of the Lord came to him and he said unto him, what doest thou here, Elijah? Why are you here? So God is asking the pastors and those that go by the name of Jesus Christ, why are you here in the cave of despair and idolatry? In the shopping center of lust and greed. Why are you there? You have a job to do. I've given you a mission. Why are you there? And you know, we got good excuses. Elijah said, well, they're killing all the prophets, you know, and I think I'm the only one left. Lord said, wait a minute, hold up. I got more. <laughs> he said, I got more where that came from. Come on now. Don't you know? Don't think you're indispensable. Uh, don't think you're indispensable because you did good for a little while. But now, what, what about now? What if he asks you now? Huh? What are you going to be found doing? Are you going to be at the mall? Are you going to be counting your money? Are you going to be looking at how big your newborn is while your soul dries up? Your job, church, and I want to compel you to understand this. Your job is to be a witness. Do not be afraid to tell somebody about Jesus. Don't get so caught up in your own little world that you forget that he told us to watch. He's not talking about in your house only. He's not talking about on your job only. He's not talking about in your church only. He's talking about out there. If you are saved and you feel with the Holy Ghost, then you need to go get other folks saved and feel with the Holy Ghost. And you need to let the Holy Ghost lead you. And you need to warn people. You need to let them know you have to jump down their throat. I believe you. And you say every Christmas, you devil you. You ain't got no business with them. Yeah, you ain't. No, no. Uh, I'm appointed to this task. Huh? But, but you got to use wisdom. You have to be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. All you have to do is be in the right place. You got to be in the right place in your spirit. Yeah. You got to be in the right place and let your will be the will of God and let God's will be your will. And then you can say with, with fervency and with a love and you can say, Lord, thy will be done. Nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. What are you doing there? Why are you not telling people? Why are you not living holy? You're holy for a while until somebody upset your day. You're holy for a while until somebody's texting on their phone while driving in front of you. You're holy for a while. Soon as things don't go your way, you're not holy anymore. You're sort of holy. You're a sinner saved by grace. Instead of a former sinner living by the power and the grace of God. I want to compel you to understand. Ask yourself, do I tell enough people about Jesus? Because that's what he told me to do. Am I willing to be insulted, rejected? Am I willing to take stripes because of Jesus? Am I willing to be stoned like Stephen was? Am I willing to be beheaded like Paul was? Am I willing to be crucified? I tell you what I hope he finds you doing. I hope he finds that you have made a decision to deny yourself and to pick up your cross and follow him daily. I hope he finds you. Having submitted yourself to the righteousness of God, you have denied yourself and said, look, I've been this way since I was 10. I'm 70 something years, years old. I know how you going to tell me, how you going to tell me I am a servant of the most high God. I am sent by God to warn the people. Don't you know, America, um, I just got to say this. The Lord was showing me about these, these sorry people. And I could not understand, and I'm sharing with some of the people, Barack Hussein Obama, I couldn't believe he was elected president the first time. And I told people when, I, when he first started stumping for president, I said, who is this guy? So I listened to him. And I said, ooh, his spirit ain't right. I said, he sounded like them, bro, them pimps on them 1970s black exploitation movies. Sound like he hung out with Superfly. Sound like he hung out with Dolomite. He's smoother than Peter Pan, Peter Butter. Oh, that brother was smooth. I said, and so I began to pray and ask the Lord to show me who is this guy. And the Lord said, if he's elected president, know I'm about to punish America. And I told people, I said, if he's elected president, where's my wife? Can I get a witness? I said, God's getting ready to punish America. Why would you go after a guy named Hussein, Saddam Hussein, and then elect a guy named Barry Hussein Obama? Except you've been blinded. You've been delusional. You got caught up in your racist attitude 
because you brown or you black. You mean more power to it? Been a lot of more qualified black people, to, but look at the timing of it all. It could have been Jesse Jackson. It could have been Shirley Chisholm. It could have been Alan Keyes. It could have been Dr. Ben Carson. It could have been a lot of other black folks. But why this? Because God sent the snake. God sent the snake to deceive. And not only that, but he deceived twice. That's strong delusion. Why? Because you're hiding when you should be standing. You're hiding. The church said nothing. All these black church, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh, we finally got a brother in the white. Yeah, but he's a devil. He an Islamic, Buddhist, Muslim-loving liar. He hates America. He hates this nation, but when somebody goes in that never drank, never smoked, never did coke, got wealth, was popular until he decided to do right before the whole world. He, oh, what's his name? Trump. Trump is the best card you can have in a deck. God sent the best card, and people rejected him. He said, look, I ain't even going to take a paycheck. Barack Obama got millions making $275,000 a year, he became a millionaire in eight years to where he owns a couple of mansions. And you know what makes me sick is when I hear black folks say, well, the white man do it, but I thought you hated the white man. So Paul, the word of God says, let us not do it, say, uh, let us not say, let us go do evil, that good may come of it. But when God sent you a power play, America didn't want it. They believe lies. And when you call them on it, you know what, you know what people that don't know what they're talking about do? You say, well, what lie did he tell? Well, what lie, what lie did uh, Obama tell? Where do I start? <laughs> he lied when he took the oath of the presidency. He lied then. He lied because he knew in his heart he hated America. I know, y'all, I'm not that popular. That's okay. I, I'm not trying to be popular down here. I just want to be known in glory. So here we have this question. What shall you be found doing? So what I like to do is meditate on the word of God night and day. And there's this other president that's in the house now. And I said, I said, understand these other names. These other names, and see what George Bush did was he hid his light under the bush so that men could not see. Don't the Bible says, what man takes a lamp and hide it under a bushel? But that's an allegorical statement. And then you have Hussein, a deceiver, huh, who would love to be a dictator, but he's selling for the whatever kind of hundreds of millions of dollars he got and stole. He bowed to a king. American presidents don't bow to anybody. He's the first president in the United States that's ever bowed to a king. And it wasn't Jesus. And then you have the witch, the wicked witch of the north, south, east, and west, Hillary, who wanted that off. She wanted to be such a witch she could bust through the glass ceiling. And got mad because she, can you imagine her? No, no, I'm melting. <laughs> and now we have Mr. Biden. I'm, I'm, I'm almost through. Joe Biden. I asked the Lord in my meditation, Lord, what is, what is it with Joe Biden? I said, what is that? He said, think on his name. And I thought about it. And I said, oh, my word. Buy. What does buy mean? What is a den? A house or a habitat? A house divided against itself will not stand. And Joe Biden has been brought to the forefront to further divide this nation. And if you look at it honestly, you have to agree it is horribly divided. But don't think God won't have, I'm not going to tell you God ain't having nothing to do with it because he's having everything to do with it. God even, the Lord even told me to quit saying send them folks back across the border. He said, why do you say send them back? I said, well, Lord, I, just, I don't like them being, coming over here like this. And the Lord said, don't say them for them to be sent back because they are coming because I am about to punish America. 
This is my doing, so don't you say send them back again. You know why he did that? Because he, lo- he loves me. He hears me. And God didn't, he, 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 he's, in other words, he's telling me to get out of his way. Remember how he told Moses? He said, move out of my way, and I'll kill them all, and I'll raise up a nation out of you. And, 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 and knows that Moses said, no, Lord, he said, if you do that, they're going to say you weren't able to keep them. But the Lord showed me years ago that he was going to divide this nation. Can I get an amen? Because there are witnesses in here when that, when that prophecy came forth. And God wants you to know there's about to be bloodshed in this nation. And people are going to wonder who's doing it. And some hypocrite and lying preachers are going to say, well, this is just this is just bad people doing bad things. It's just over there. It's just there. It's Donald Trump. It's raining in, in Omaha. It's Donald Trump. It's a tornado in Alabama. It's Donald Trump. It's, everything's Donald Trump. But they'll never say, give honor and glory to Jesus. Give glory to God. So ask yourself. If Jesus came right now, let's say he came tomorrow, make it a little bit easier. Tomorrow is what they call that day. Xmas. That's the day of the heathen. Is what, yeah. one, that's, the, that's the heathen high day. The holy high day of the heathens and idolaters. The devils. They're devils. They, they devils. And I don't care if they got a big church with a whole lot of parking lots and people showing you where to park. I don't care. They're all devils. Anybody that partake of this, because he told us, come out from among them and be ye separate. You can't tell the Christian so-called from the heathen these days. They all look alike. They're at the mall. They got their little red and green bags. Uh, They got got thistles on their clothes from where they set up their tree. Probably a feather where they evicted the oil. Listen, you have been given a mission. And that mission began when Jesus said, if you will follow me, you must first deny yourself. Pick up your cross daily and follow me. Follow him. You really believe Jesus said, pick up your cross daily and celebrate my birthday by by teaching kids how to lie and be greedy. Not, not, no, that, that, that's not it. So what are you, going, are you going to be found tomorrow giving glory to God in how you conduct yourself? Hallelujah. Are you going to be found giving glory to God and, and you don't have to participate, talk about Christmas tree. Tell me that's not a gospel song for a tree. You worship a tree. You got your arms around the tree. Yeah. Talk about Christmas tree, oh yeah. Christmas tree. I don't even know the words to that heathenistic song. <laughs> There's something wrong with folks. It is so simple when you love God to read his word, to trust his word, and to do what he said. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Do not partake of their evil deeds. Because if you do, you're going to be numbered with them. You're going to be numbered with the unbelievers. You can go up there with your Holy Baptist Catholic card. Lord, when you die, say, Lord, uh, but didn't I cast out devils in your name? I don't know you. But, but didn't I baptize in your name? I don't know you. But, but, but didn't I prophesy in your name? Depart from me, ye that work at the iniquity. I never knew you. Because anything you did righteous before you did your iniquity has been forgotten, including you. Get away from me, you devil, you. And guess what? He don't care how old you are. He don't care if you're sick. He don't care if your mama was walking down the road with Mother Teresa. What will you be found doing when he comes and says, come on home, children? When he shouts, he cracks the sky. Are you going to be hugged up around a Christmas tree talking about Yuletide Carol? Being something most people don't even know, a Yule log is a baby that was tight. It's an old Babylonian religion. Yule Tide, you know what Yule Tide carols, right? They would take a baby for sacrifice and they would wrap it up tight, a living baby, and they would throw it in the fire to Molech. And so we take the Yule Tide carols, really? And you're a Christian and don't know that? That's devil worship. That's devil worship. The devil is slick. He likes to give you pretty shiny 
pretty shiny, pretty shiny glittery, and lace it with some collard greens and turkey, sweet potatoes. What will you be found doing? Tell somebody. He lives. He lives. He is risen. He lives. And he demands that we worship God the Father in spirit and in truth. And that we share this gospel with all. Hallelujah. Though the mountains shake and the earth may quake, I still have peace. Though the waves may break and the oceans swell, I still have peace. Peace be still. Peace be still, my soul, my soul has peace, my soul. I hope your soul has peace. And the best place to find it is living in the will of God. God bless you and keep you. This is my prayer. Good work, good work.